Sometimes you may leave your advisor, and sometimes they may leave you. They may leave for another position elsewhere, or maybe they don't think that they can provide the support you need. And, just as in any relationship you have, there may be times you feel you're not getting the attention you need. It's possible, during those times, you may not be sure if it's okay to share those feelings with your advisor, and that can result in more anxiety and stress. There are others on campus you can speak to as you prepare to discuss these feelings with your advisor so you can feel more confident about your approach. Here are some suggestions from faculty about how to approach the situation. Like any other relationship, it's very hard to guess what someone is thinking. My advice is always not to try to make attributions. If they don't email you back right away, don't assume it's because they're angry at you. It could be because they got flooded with emails at that minute. I had an odd incident where a third of my emails were going to my deleted folder. We fixed it, but there's no way a student could have guessed that's why I wasn't responding. And I think a lot of the times the fear, the hesitancy, the anxiety is because they're trying to make predictions or attributions about why an advisor is behaving a certain way or how an advisor will respond. And I would say, don't. <laughs> Go, reach out, talk to them. <laughs> Chances are your expectations will be positively violated. They are most likely happy to see you and there'll never be any harm in reaching out to your advisor. I think if a student isn't getting what they need um, from an advisor, I think the first thing um, to do is to do some self-reflection about what is it that I need and have I asked for it. So if, for example, it's more time, uh, then it may be clarifying with the advisor, um, you know, I understand that you're very busy, but are you willing to devote, you know, two hours every other week to a regular meeting with us? And in return, what I will do is uh, I will prepare uh, something that that will summarize and get our conversation started on a, a, a focused topic. So uh, if it's more time, if it's more guidance, it's uh, in a lot of ways it's figuring out how to ask uh, for what you need and also being clear to communicate about what you can bring to the relationship. When a student hasn't heard back from their advisor for a while, you know, when, when they've given them a chapter, when they, you know, when, they, when they've asked them a question or requested an appointment or something like that, and they just haven't heard back for a while, the student should absolutely feel free to, to follow up. They, they should not be afraid to follow up. Obviously, they don't, they don't want to pester, and, and, and you want to give them an appropriate amount of time. You don't want to send an email every day. Um, but absolutely, they, they should follow up. And, you know, th look, things happen to faculty members. Faculty members get sick. They travel. They have family issues. They have bad weeks, you know, where they just have a million different responsibilities. So, so, so sometimes that just happens. But when it feels like it's, it's gotten to the point, you know, that it's either hindering the student's progress or maybe they feel like the, the faculty member has forgotten about it, then, then they should simply, you know, follow up with another email. Uh, and if that doesn't work, drop by the professor's office hours. I think number one is to respect the faculty and advisor's time. Know that you're not the only student that they have. They have a whole bunch, whether that's 100 to 400, you know, every program's different. Know that the faculty also might have master's and PhD students they have to work with. And that, you know, PhD students are here longer and they're, you know, they're sometimes need more time. If you send an email to your advisor and you don't hear it back, my advice is to sec send a second email to your advisor saying, I hope you got this earlier email. If they still don't respond, then I think you need to go to their office hours. But I will note that the fact that they don't respond does not mean that they don't care or that they aren't interested because we get so much email, you can't possibly even begin to imagine it. And it's very difficult for us to keep all of it under control all of the time, especially when other things are happening. So the fact that that advisor doesn't respond doesn't mean that they're not interested or that they're dismissing you. It just means probably they didn't get to that email. Talk with the people on your committee, explain what's going on, tell the truth, be honest, and, and work it out. It's, uh, and that's kind of the philosophy of everything. We, we encourage people not, don't let things simmer, don't let um, administrative things get in your head and, and take up too much time. It's just like, spell it out. We rarely have, have problems with that. And sometimes people just like, sometimes you, you can't get your three favorites because of scheduling and you, 
you have to figure out something else. Sometimes your work develops in a way you want to have a conversation with someone else, you, you switch your committee. But the, it's, it, it's pretty rare that people change because there's, they continue to meet with all of the other faculty. Committees aren't like getting married. They're, it's, like, it's a group you work with more intensely than, than the other faculty members, but the, not to the exclusion of, of anyone else. If a student comes to me and says that they're really struggling uh, to get out of the relationship um, with their advisor or the faculty member, um, what they're looking to get, uh, the first thing I'll ask them is to say, well, you know, what is it that you want? And I find sometimes that um, being explicit about that, talking through what your actual goals are, um, is sometimes helpful. Sometimes students have a sense of what they want, but they have a hard time articulating it. And that process of talking it through with someone who feels safe to them then allows them to go into that next meeting knowing how to say what it is. Um, I think uh, faculty members particularly um, sometimes can seem intimidating to students and they uh, sometimes will dance around issues or not really speak in a, in a clear and direct manner about what they want. So I find that kind of having a, almost role playing, if you will, uh, talking things through beforehand can then help them to get out of that relationship what they need.